you lose. But you knew that already. We're back. Rochester Indies TV with Frank Lopez from uh, It's the End of the World as We Know It, submedia.tv. Check it out. It's hilarious. We've been talking about uh, the program and how it is that you create this um, almost weekly or um, how often was it coming? Bi-monthly. Bi-monthly <laughs> program. And I want to switch a little bit and talk about the coverage for uh, the Republican and Democratic uh, National Conventions. We also went out there, about eight people from the uh, Rochester community from Indy Media who went out. So that's where we actually got to meet you when we first started stalking you. I had seen your work three months before and um, uh, really enjoyed it. It was just for me... Uh, refreshing to see somebody talking about this in a funny way because I don't think our sense of humor is as great and as strong as we need to be on the left to draw their people and just to laugh and take it easy sometimes so it was great and it's great that we're friends now because you keep making me laugh but anyway um, and tell me how you decided to cover the conventions and how to bring your project there and what it was like uh, it, it was it was uh, this and I you know I just recently said that I don't do anything half-assed like this was certainly half-assed um, I um, once I heard that um, where the conventions were happening, you know, a year before, I was just like, I'm definitely going. So, I, you know, I started making plans like in my head, like how am I going to be able to afford it, and what am I going to do, blah blah blah. And then um, every year in the show, uh, the first show of the year, I do my New Year's revolutions instead of New Year's resolutions, and I had three, and one of them was that I was going to go to both conventions and cover them. So, you know. I kept putting it off. I need to contact people. What were the Paul. other two? Oh, man. <laughs> Do you remember? <laughs> one, yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, one was to uh, stop drinking coffee. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you haven't succeeded with that one. <laughs> no, I, I, well, I, I, I did well. I tell you, like, not to get uh, off subject here, but <laughs> the, the thinking behind that was not because I don't like coffee, because I love coffee, but is that I live in Vancouver, and I was trying to do a more localized diet, and coffee comes from a long uh. way you know, from Vancouver. But then I was thinking, well, I'll just drink tea. There's got to be local tea. And I looked, and I looked, and I looked, and people were like, there's no tea in British Columbia. Tea comes from Asia. Tea comes from farther than Mexican coffee. And I was like, all right, back to coffee back to it coffee. is. <laughs> you can start growing it in Vancouver. <laughs> work yeah. out. But anyway, um, I uh, did not um, do any head work for the conventions until the actual, until the summer before the conventions. And I just decided to show up in St. Paul. And I actually had some, some fans uh, in, uh, in St. Paul and in, in Minnesota, uh, Minneapolis, from the National Lawyers Guild. And they were so awesome, very nice people. And they showed me around and they connected me with the indie media folks there. And then the indie media folks helped uh, find uh, a space. Mm -hmm. um, as far as Denver goes, uh, the Denver independent media, uh, at least the video aspect of it, was really well put together because... And actually, you were in one of those conference calls that I was involved in. Mm -hmm. um, they had a, a really awesome space called Denver Open Media, which is a public access facility um, with, with you know nice in internet connection, uh, pretty decent location compared distance-wise to where everything was happening, and um, and a lot of different projects were being uh, uh, produced from there mm -hmm. around the DNC, mm -hmm. and so, and all the people who were involved there were very awesome about pulling their video so mm -hmm. in um, Denver we had over 20 videographers I would mm -hmm. dare say more than 20 videographers constantly bringing footage which enabled in. you to do the editing which is one of your strong suits and mm -hmm. a lot of people that are doing indie media don't have the training or the background in that so yeah it was absolutely a great balance and and also there were people there who knew where everything was so like there were there were a lot more people doing tape intake and then you would, and it was not like it was super well organized, but somebody would say like, oh, I just, I just got footage. Uh, somebody, I snuck in a, a camera at the Rage Against the Machine show, and we have the entire concert. And I'm like, give me that. Mm -hmm. Or somebody got Cynthia McKinney speech. Give me that. I want to use that. Or somebody got the whole Fox News guy being confronted by War Churchill's handlers. Hmm. Give me that. So it was, it was, it was a, it was a great atmosphere. Uh, in St. Paul, uh, we were sharing the space with uh, Rochester Indie Media and with uh, Glassbeat Collective, and then uh, maybe somebody from LA Indie Media was there, and, uh, and maybe a few other people. I'm not uh, Portland Indie Media, maybe. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was a secure location. Talk about what that means, working in a secure location, and is it necessary? At, and how was it there that right. an environment, a climate like that, that that environment was necessary or not? 
I had never done this. This, this, uh, the secure, the security in the location was a, a, a suggestion by uh, one of the members from the Glassweed Collective, and uh, he has history of harassment uh, by the police as, as, as a journalist and a videographer. So we went with it. We said, like, okay, well, you know, we we all agreed. Let's keep the um, the space closed or or open just to the people that we can vouch for. Um, and um, that turned out to be the best decision we made because, as we found, and, um, and as you can see from the coverage and you can see from, from the film that we produced, um, journalists were targeted by the police uh, as early as a week prior to the convention. And all the, all the media spaces, and not just the media spaces, but also all the uh, activist organized spaces were also raided. And the police didn't know where we were. If they would have known, I absolutely guarantee you that they mm -hmm. would have taken us out. And if we would have lost that, with it, it would have been a huge blow. And how do you think all these attacks on the journalists and often the independent media journalists, how it affected the project or the coverage of that of that week during the convention? It affected it greatly because um, I went to both conventions with members from the Pepper Spray Productions Collective in Seattle. And, uh, and and they were essentially my eyes. They were they were even though I was getting footage from other groups, we would create pieces that we they were pre agreed upon, mm -hmm. and they would bring them and we would edit them together mm -hmm. and, and and make it happen. So and they, they got won. Arrested. They won at the RNC. They both got arrested. I had lost uh, two thirds of my team, and I was basically thankfully there were other people who were giving me footage, but uh, at the same time they would, they also helped me edit. So that whole week, like you can you can actually see the shows from Denver have a higher quali production quality uh, because they will also edit a, s a segment for the show. Mm -hmm. Once they were nabbed, uh, the shows were rushed. They were um, they were not as good, and and we were certainly very tired too. Like we, the her the whole first weekend, which is a whole another story. <laughs> Nobody slept. At least I didn't sleep. Monday came around, and I was completely spent. And, and then you made a documentary, we're going to have to talk about that, Ground Noise and Static, uh, in a week, which is phenomenal, probably pulling from, what, 40 or more videotapes, I don't know, I mean, at the end maybe we had a couple hundred, I'm not sure, but uh, it's a lot of material to go through, we'll talk more about it. Frank Lopez from Submedia.tv, check it out. It only took the scum-sucking corporate media a year to catch up with the righteous troublemakers that planned to crash a party at the RNC and the NC. Well, anarchists are hitting the airwaves in the Midwest. They call themselves the RNC Welcoming Committee, and they have plans to crash the Republican convention in Minnesota later this summer. No fucking shit, Sherlock. When you fuck with people, there are consequences. But even though we will have massive numbers out there, the motherfucking popo will be there in force too. So if you are a newbie to this type of party, there are a few things that you should know. To give you some protest tips, I spoke with Heatscore Tom of the motherfucking APC and a seasoned medic of mass rebellions. Hey Tom, how the fuck are you? I'm doing pretty good. So, what the fuck is a medic? A medic is someone who, not necessarily during a protest, but in general, helps people uh, immediately. They're the first person on site to an injury, um, and they kind of conduct first aid until a doctor can arrive, or until the person can be brought to a doctor. Why is a medic needed in mass demonstrations? We need to bring our own medics because the unfortunate thing is the police clear whether or not ambulances and paramedics can come into a scene or not. And if we're gaining the upper hand on the street and all of a sudden the cops decide not to let ambulances in, then that could be problematic for people that are having injuries. What should people do if they get pepper sprayed? Uh, the thing with pepper spray is you want to get water and the best thing is those sports bottles. They have like a tip, you can pop them in and out and it creates pressure when you squeeze on the bottle. Anything that's going to push the pepper spray out of the eye. And you want to go from the inside out. The idea with the water is it doesn't actually do anything about curing the pepper spray. It's just the force of the water pushing out. Um, other things that work with pepper spray are Maalox, non-flavored Maalox, as long as it's the original kind. Um, in the eye, a 50-50 solution with water works really well too at relieving the stinging in your eye. Hi, Rochester Indie TV here with Frank Lopez from It's the End of the World as We Know It. And uh, I'm bummed though. I'm bummed that uh, It's the End of the World as We Know It is on hiatus because I feel like I just kind of discovered it. But now I also have the four-hour compilation or a couple four-hour compilations. Um, so I'm going to be watching that and we can get all the archives. But uh, 
what are you going to do now? You're not like retiring now that Obama's in. Like, what, what's happening? What's no, going no, on? No, no, it, it has nothing to do with that. I, I, I was going to do the show for just one year. That was my goal. And uh, and then the second, the next, the following year, I was just going to start on 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 uh, this film that 